Coming to you from our new studio here in the great state of Texas, we film our first new episode in months, and I couldn't think of a better topic to kick things off than the official announcement of a new reactor program being developed stateside. Is it another LWR plant like the new scale design? No. Does it use molten salt? Kind of. And I'm going to get into it. So let's get started. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hello again and welcome to Rock Logic. I'm your host, Sean Kenny. And before we get started, I want to ask you to hit the like button and drop a comment below. Let us know what you think about our new studio setup. With that being said, guys, we have a new studio set up here, still in progress, but we're excited about what we have set up so far. This is awesome, I'm really excited. I have been away for way too long and cannot wait to get started. Today is a very exciting day, not just because we get to record in the new studio, but because I get to discuss an exciting development after years of waiting for something exciting to happen in the advanced nuclear space in this country, I can finally say that a new nuclear plant is being built stateside. That's right, an advanced reactor is going to be built in the United States. It's not a PWR and is being built as part of a public-private partnership. TerraPower, an advanced reactor startup backed and financed by billionaire Bill Gates, and Pacific Corp, which is owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, are collaborating with Rocky Mountain Power to build an advanced nuclear demonstration plant on the site of an existing cold fire power station in Wyoming. This site will validate the safety and efficiency aspects of the natrium reactor concept. But what is natrium? Why haven't we talked about it before? And is this going to be a game changer in the advanced nuclear space? For for starters, let's talk about the company behind the design. TerraPower was founded in 2006 in Bellevue, Washington, with financial backing from Bill Gates' venture capital firm Cascade Investments. Initially, the plan was to develop the Traveling Wave, a reactor concept that would burn through an entire uranium fuel core over the course of several decades. Years later, they started pivoting towards a molten chloride fast spectrum design similar to the ones that we've talked about on this show. In 2020, they partnered up with GE Itachi on the natrium reactor concept. This is comprised of a 345 megawatt sodium cooled fast spectrum reactor paired with a molten salt storage solution that can boost energy output to 500 megawatts for a period of five and a half hours, which is enough to accommodate other intermittent renewables to the grid, thus supporting an all and above approach to supporting clean energy. The program received $80 million in grant funding last year from the U.S. Department of Energy as part of an initiative to support the development and commercial deployment of advanced reactor concepts. The hope is to have the reactor developed and active by the end of this decade, with commercial operations resuming into the 2030s. So it looks like everything is looking up. We will see advanced reactors coming into the market near term. I guess that means we can pack it in and call it quits on talking about the industry. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is no, no, I'm not done. I, I'm, I'm just kidding, guys. Just seriously, that was a joke. That, that was a joke. Look, there's a lot of positives about this development. It's very exciting, and I don't wish to downplay this in any way, shape, or form. But there are questions I have about the reactor. After reading several articles and going on the TerraPower website, I'm given some basic information about the storage system, its capabilities, and the fact that the primary heat source is a fast reactor. But no significant uh, details outside of that. I had to do some digging, and after a deep dive, here's what I know. GE Itachi is offering its expertise in the primary reactor, which is based on the PRISM design that has been pushed for the past two decades. The technology is heavily derived from the Integral Fast Reactor Experiment, which was built and tested by Argonne National Labs during the 1980s. The experiment was a pool-type sodium-cooled reactor that offered many safety benefits and was rigorously tested up until its premature shutdown in 1994. Now, you may be asking, What's your point, Sean? Isn't it a good thing that the reactor concept has been tested? Absolutely, and there are several benefits to using liquid sodium in a reactor like this. For starters, you get a really good temperature range between its solid and gaseous states. Sodium melts at 371 Kelvin and boils at 1156 Kelvin. So you get a range of 785 Kelvin, which is eight times greater than using water for cooling. In addition, the reactor runs at low pressure and the sodium doesn't moderate or slow down neutrons. That sounds great, you might say, high temperatures and low pressure operations, so it operates under the same advantages of an MSR, right? 
wrong. Sodium has a lot of advantages over water for cooling, but unfortunately, it has a lot of disadvantages. The main one is its chemical reactivity, which drives higher costs as a result of having to add additional safety systems. But don't take my word for it. I asked Ed File, a nuclear engineer and CTO of Elysium Industries, about sodium-cooled reactor designs in an in-depth interview over six months ago. Take a look. Okay. But you are right. The, the sodium fast reactors have traditionally been about 25 to 50% more expensive than light water reactor cousins. Mm. Um, a lot of that was in the fuel. It was also in the safety systems and training mm. associated with handling sodium and sodium fires in the plant. The, the, the reactor itself, the, that's not really a sodium fire issue because the second loop has sodium in it as well. It's mm. the second loop that's going out into the plant that has a tendency to leak and cause fires. And, and that's that's really where the, the costs were associated with those. He's not wrong. Those fires can do serious damage. When everything is sealed up, you're good, but these things can leak. And when sodium comes into contact with water, it reacts to produce sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. The hydrogen ignites and burns when it comes into contact with the air. This was made clear with the Monja reactor in Japan. In 1995, Vibrations induced by seismic activity caused a thermal well inside a pipe carrying sodium coolant to break, allowing several hundred kilograms of sodium to leak onto the floor below. Upon contact with the air, the liquid sodium reacted with the oxygen and moisture in the air, filling the room with caustic fumes and producing temperatures of several hundred degrees Celsius. This heat was so intense that it warped several steel structures in the room. It remained shut down for 15 years, but it was restarted in 2010. Later that year, it was forced to shut down again because someone dropped a crane into a pool of liquid sodium. Japan wasn't alone with its sodium woes. France had developed several sodium cool designs which ran into those same issues. Its early designs suffered two leaks in the late 70s and 80s. The Super Phoenix, uh, its first commercial fast design, was forced to shut down for over 25 months during its 11 years of operation to fix leaks and other technical issues relating to the sodium coolant. It was later decommissioned. Now again, I'm not trying to scare people into thinking that Bill Gates is building something that's unsafe. These reactors have been built before, they have been tested, and we have the know-how to accommodate for safety concerns. My optimism at the beginning of this episode was real because I am genuinely excited about the prospect of advanced reactor designs getting funded and finding a pathway to commercial development. I only want to provide some context as to what this reactor is. This is not a molten salt reactor. This is a sodium cooled reactor using solid fuel that dumps excess heat into a molten salt solution to store extra power. It's important to understand the difference. Chloride salts, like the ones that will be used in Elysium Industries design, are chemically stable and inherently safe. Sodium is an alkali metal that is highly chemically reactive. I don't quite understand the DOE's choice in this particular reactor design, and I'm sure that the good people at TerraPower know what they're doing, but there are concerns with going this path. My concerns lie with the general misconceptions into what the reactor is. I hope to learn more about the reactor's development as it continues. However, my biggest fear is that the plant goes online, suffers a sodium leak, catches fire, and the headline reads, Fires caused by molten salt reactor. Aside from that, it's still an exciting development, one that I will continue to cover in future episodes. After all, TerraPower wasn't the only company to receive similar funds. X Energy, a Maryland startup, uses an entirely different approach. But this will be a topic for another episode. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic.